the Democratic primary campaign. When it started, it was all kumbaya, let's beat Trump together. But now it's turned into a season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Everyone backstabbing. The House of Bernie has grown in strength and size <laughs> while facing a challenge from the kingdom of Buttigieg. <laughs> Meanwhile, the once powerful Lord Biden is slowly watching his influence slip away. And don't forget, once they're all done fighting each other, they will have to face off against the ultimate enemy, the White King. <laughs> but just like Game of Thrones, there's one character who's been off in the wings plotting the whole time, the imp. You see, <laughs> national polls now have billionaire Mike Bloomberg moving into third place. And President Trump has taken notice of this big little threat, and he's already trying to defeat him in a trial by Twitter. A Twitter war heating up between President Trump and one of the men who wants to take his job. The president took aim at former mayor Mike Bloomberg, saying Mini Mike is a five foot four mass of dead energy who does not want to be on the debate stage with these professional politicians. No boxes, please. Bloomberg responded, writing, We know many of the same people in New York. Behind your back, they laugh at you and call you a carnival barking clown. They know you inherited a fortune and squandered it with stupid deals and incompetence. I have the record and the resources to defeat you, and I will. Oh! 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 This is crazy. Two mega rich dudes dissing each other in the most personal way. It would be like if a rap battle was on CNBC. <laughs> and the sad part, the sad part for me is that billionaire feuds used to be so much more dignified. You know? Yeah, back in the day, it wasn't on Twitter. They'd be like, Mr. Trump, I have commissioned a devastating opera that disparages both you and your lineage. Be like, well, Master Bloomberg, at this very moment, a team of artisans is sculpting a middle finger from the world's finest Italian marble. <laughs> In eight to nine months, you will be truly owned. <laughs> but right now, Donald Trump is the least of Mike Bloomberg's problems. See, the real threat to Bloomberg's campaign is his past. Mike Bloomberg facing new criticism tonight amid audio that has surfaced on the controversial policy of stop and frisk. Bloomberg is under fire tonight after a 2015 speech surfaced where he defends his controversial stop and frisk policy and explained why cops are put in minority neighborhoods. 95% of your murders and murderers and murder victims fit in one and all. You can just take the description, Xerox it, and pass it out to all the cops. They are male minorities, 15 to 25. We put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. And the way she get the guns out of the kids' hands is uh, to throw them against the wall and frisk them. Wow. That is not a good look. Hmm? Think about it. While Bloomberg is out there trying to win the black vote in 2020, he's on tape in 2015 talking about black people like they're crime pinatas. Just throw them against the wall, see what comes out. Yeah, could be a gun, could be a Tootsie Roll, it's fun. <laughs> this is not a good look. Getting caught on tape encouraging police to harass black people is definitely gonna hurt you with black voters. It's the same way you would lose white voters if a tape came out of you saying that pets aren't the same as babies. Yeah, <laughs> all the pumpkin spice in the world can't save you after that. White people would be mad. This is my baby. Now, if it was just one bad audio clip, maybe, maybe Mike Bloomberg <laughs> could get past it and move on. The problem is, Mayor Mike has a long history of defending stop and frisk, and now even video clips are coming out. And yet another video clip drops tonight, purporting to show Mayor Mike Bloomberg discussing hot topics with racial overtones. They just keep saying, oh, it's a disproportionate percentage of a particular ethnic group. I think we disproportionately stop whites too much and minorities too little. Yeah. According to Mike Bloomberg, white people were the real victims of stop and frisk. Imagine that. Black people and Latinos spent years, years, saying that they were being harassed by the police. And Bloomberg's response was, I hear you. We have been unfair to white people. <laughs> it almost feels like if, if Bloomberg was Abraham Lincoln, he would have ended slavery, but for the totally wrong reason, be like, we need to end this cruel abomination. Too many white people are getting carpal tunnel in their whipping hands. We've <laughs> gotta help them. 
Now, since these clips came out, Bloomberg has been facing a lot of pressure to explain himself. And uh, something tells me he's tr struggling with uh, how to respond. Campaigning in Tennessee today, Michael Bloomberg um. expressed regret for comments from 2015 about New York City's controversial stop and frisk policy. Mr. Mayor, why did you say what you said in that 2015 speech? Um. I can safely say I've never seen the three typing dots in real life. <laughs> Look at him. You, you never see him like this. Mike Bloomberg hasn't been this stre stressed since he got into that fight in the subway. But, <laughs> but my bad, I shouldn't have interrupted. I'll let him answer. I don't think those words reflect what, uh, how I led the most diverse city in the nation. And uh, I apologized for the uh, practice and the pain that it caused. But why uh, did but you say it? It was uh, five years ago. And, um, you know, it's just not the way that I think. And it does not the way, it doesn't reflect what I do every day. Yeah, of course it doesn't reflect what you do every day. You're not the mayor anymore. Nobody thinks you're stopping and frisking black people on your personal time. <laughs> I mean, mostly because you can't reach their pockets, but... <laughs> but also, it's weird that he tries to dismiss those clips by saying it was five years ago. Five years? W what difference is that supposed to make for you? Huh? Look, five years ago, I was just a 72-year-old man. I didn't know any better. <laughs> I'm much older now, which automatically makes you less racist. <laughs> But clearly, the comments in those clips do reflect what Bloomberg was doing as mayor, right? For the simple reason that it's what he did as mayor. You don't have to be a genius to figure this out. As much as Bloomberg is trying to reposition himself now that he needs the support of black voters, he encouraged his police department to treat black people like they were all criminals. And even as he keeps trying to apologize, he's never really taking responsibility for what he did. You know, he apologizes for pieces. Oh, that, well, I ran a diverse place. He's not saying sorry for what he actually did. It would be like if you got caught cheating and your apology was, babe, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't delete those messages from my phone. I should have hid them better. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not... Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. I should have smashed in a hotel instead of our bed. You're right, you're right. <laughs> I mess... I've learned my lesson, yeah? Yeah, your friends are off limits. From now on, strangers only, baby. <laughs> strangers only. <laughs> so that's where Mike Bloomberg is now. As much as he tries to move forward and get out of this, reporters won't let the story go. They keep hassling him at events, questioning him about his motives, just trying to find any little thing that he's done wrong. It must be so frustrating for him. And to that, I say, Mike Bloomberg, welcome to the world of Stop and Frisk. We'll be right back. You know, the, the biggest issue I think I have and many other people have with Mike Bloomberg and how he's defending his Stop and Frisk record is that he doesn't seem to know what he's defending. And that, that, for me, is a problem, you know? He goes, oh, I, I apologize for the policy. And people are not, are not as angry about the policy, I think, as how the policy was targeted. Because for so many years, especially in America, black people have said, hey, the police are targeting us just because we're black. They treat us like we're all criminals. They're not just trying to go for criminals. And what would people say to people? Oh, you're overreacting. Cop cops are not just gonna throw you against the wall. You must have done something. You and I can imagine for a long time, for many black Americans, it must have felt like being gaslit. You know what's happening to you. You say what's happening to you, and people are like, that's crazy. And I can imagine how for many white people in America, they're like, that is crazy. You just got thrown against the wall? Why? You must have been doing something. Because white people are like, I've never been thrown against the wall. That, that would never happen to me. What, what? You just got thrown against the wall? That's it? I see cops all the time. I say, hello, officer. They say, hello, sir. And then I keep walking. <laughs> you just got thrown against the wall? That doesn't make any sense. And I can imagine... And then a lot of black people were like, you white people are being racist because you don't... And white people are like, that is insane. Cops will not just throw... And I can see how people have lived in these worlds for so long. And then now you have audio of Mike Bloomberg saying... And that audio for me, if you break it down into pieces, has so many issues with it. First of all, the fact that he says, if you look at criminals and, 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 and victims of crime, et cetera, you can Xerox. You can just copy and paste it and put it out there. It shows me that you didn't even care about the differences between black people. You made it seem like black is crime when in fact black is most affected by crime. That is the thing that you did there, right? That's the first problem I have. Secondly, the fact that people don't seem to realize the ramifications of treating people like that. 
Imagine if you are a black kid living in Mike Bloomberg's New York City. Every day, you're getting frisked and thrown against a wall, huh? put over the hood of a car every day. This is what cops are just, this is your life. Now imagine if you are a black kid who lives in this world. A cop gets you, pulls you, throws you into all. You got something, you, no, you carry, next day it happens again. Maybe next week, maybe next month, whenever it is. At some point, what do you say? Fuck the police, yeah? And then you get people like, why don't you respect the police? Why don't they respect me? They don't protect and serve me. These people come and throw me against the wall and treat me like a criminal. You know what I mean? And then what does that kid do one day? They see the cops, they go, screw this. I'm not staying around for this. They run away. The cops pursue. Now they catch you. What are you? You're, you're evading arrest. You're resisting arrest. Now you get arrested for resisting arrest. Then you go to jail. You can't afford bail. Now you're in prison. What does prison turn you into more likely than not? A criminal, right? And even if you don't become a criminal because of that, you are still in the system now. We've seen how these kids get locked up. They can't afford to come out. Now they are living a life of crime without being a criminal. And then you're just like, oh, but these kids spend all their time in jail. How did they get to jail? Why were you running from the cops? Because I was tired of being thrown against the motherfucking wall. <laughs> I'm not gonna stick around for that. I remember that in high school. I didn't wait, the bully came and I was like, oh shit, and I was gone. <laughs> I wasn't gonna stand there and be like, yeah, well, well good afternoon, bully. Uh, nice to see you again. Yeah, different thing today, yes, yeah, so are we gonna talk this out? No, at some point you knew the bully was gonna do what he's gonna do, so you ran before they even got to you. And then people are like, why are these kids running away? They don't respect the police, but do the police respect them? And that is something no one can deny. If you've ever been in a rich neighborhood specifically, not just a white neighborhood, but a rich neighborhood, you will see the relationship that police have with those communities. It's very different because they know if they throw the wrong person, search the wrong person, frisk the wrong person, that person knows someone powerful enough to make sure that their job is in danger. And those are the dynamics that you're dealing with here. And so my problem with Mike Bloomberg is, he's not saying, I'm sorry for targeting black people. I'm sorry for treating black people like second class citizens. I'm sorry for gaslighting black people for so long. No, he's just like, I'm sorry that stop and, stop and frisk happened to affect black communities. And it's like, no, it didn't happen to. You designed it to.